Okay. So um, last video we, we we demonstrated that if you have um, some extra terms in your assume displacement function, um, as long as you include the correct terms, the principle of virtual work can help you get rid of those extra terms. You know they. If you solve them, they'll, they'll be zero. So now let's take a look at another case. Um, yeah, didn't you see that the virtual displacement can be anything? So uh, what if I just use some virtual displacement that's not uh, the same as the uh, assumed displacement? How would that work? So w we're still doing the we can't deliver beam, and by now you probably already um, pretty familiar with this. Now, I mean, we're gonna assume a displacement function, which is uh, um, a x squared plus b x third. So, mm, yeah, you're like, okay, well, I recognize that. I, I know that because that's the uh, correct one, right? Um, yeah. But uh, the virtual displacement we're going to do for this example uh, will be something different. It will be, um, let's see, uh, delta x uh, to the fourth, and then delta 2 x to the six. Um, yeah, this is like totally, you know, have nothing to do with that. It's just some like arbitrary thing. But another important thing to point out again, I think I keep talking to about it, is uh, uh, those guys they, they set up boundary conditions so that the reaction forces doesn't do virtual work. Okay. So mm, if you assume that, then all you need to do is just write out the uh, virtual. Uh, external work, uh, which is simply P um, times uh, delta 1 uh, L force plus P times delta 2 L6. Then the uh, internal one, virtual work, um, yeah, this one's like VI. And then zero to L. Then we need to do the integral of this guy. Differentiate twice. So you got two uh, a plus six b x. And then this guy differentiate twice, which you got twelve delta one x square plus thirty delta two x fourth. Dx. Okay, I'm gonna um, mm, kind of spare you the pain of trying to do this yourself, which you totally can. I'm just gonna write out the final outcome of this integration after you you know did everything, and then I'm gonna regroup it in um, the uh, delta one and delta two terms. So what you're gonna get is actually uh, something quite simple: eight a l third plus eighteen b l fourth. Uh, that's the delta one term, and then plus twelve a l fifths uh, plus thirty b l six. Uh, that's the delta two term, and then it's the same thing. Those two guys be equal and then you just separate out delta 1 and delta 2 and you have two equations the first one is PL4 EI this is about delta 1 so that should be equals to this guy A A 8 A L third um, plus 18 B L force. Then you will have another equation for delta two, which is uh, P L six over E I equals to 
um, 12 a l fifths plus 30 b l six. So you solve this, you get to b equals to negative p over six e i, and a equals to p l over two e i. So that's the exact answer. Um, yeah, I know. I'm like telling you this is it is, but if you really follow everything and then do it yourself, you find out that it is true that as long as you have correct terms in your assumed displacement function, uh, it actually doesn't matter what you have for those guys. Um, yeah, one point is that you, 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 because there's two unknowns, you need to have two, um, you know, deltas so that you can have two functions. But once you solve it, it should resolve itself. You always get those answers. And then because we're not using the same format as these, if you compare to our first uh, example lecture, you find out, uh, you know, now this uh, coefficient to solution matrix is not symmetric anymore. So it does not have to be symmetric to get your right answer. Uh, P a prince of virtual work will always give you the right answer. So we could say um, as long as uh, uh, your uh, displacement function uh, has the uh, right terms uh, principle of virtual work will uh, give you the uh, right answer. Okay, you can copy that down your notes. But then, uh, if I'm going to write down that, uh, mm -hmm. there's another apparent follow up question you'd like. What if my assumed this guy is wrong? So which means that, you know, what if it does not have those two terms? Um, in fact, uh, Ironically, uh, this is like 90% of a case. Because for a simple beam, we can probably solve it, uh, you know, and then everything will be good. But uh, if you think about the uh, ending element, uh, sometimes uh, the correct Vx, you know, simply doesn't exist. So here's a powerful thing about the principle of virtual work. Um, the principle of virtual work, um, the thing that uh, it will always give you an OK answer. Um, yeah, even if you, you know, even if you give it a wrong assumption, it will work with your wrong assumption to give you some parameter that will be kind of okay. It will balance the energy out. Um, but of course, that, that sounds too attractive, but if you think about a finite element uh, where you have a piece of material where you Dissect it into like smaller, 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 smaller pieces element. Um, this happens is that in each element, your solution is not your ek in this case is not exactly accurate, a hundred percent. It is only an okay answer. But once you shrink this down small enough, uh, the overall behavior will actually be quite accurate. So in fact, uh, like I told you earlier, um, 
realistically, all the models, including the displacement function, we assume everything about them are all wrong. I mean, even if uh, go back to here, you say, "Oh, this is correct. This is a classic answer." It is wrong because no beam is a real Euler Bernoulli beam because that thing doesn't exist. It just uh, you know approximate our real beam behavior very well. So the same happens here. I mean, it doesn't matter if this is really the correct answer or not. What we do know is that principle of virtual work, if you use that to derive this, you're going to get a EK, which we're going to talk about later. That will always be OK within an element. And then once your element shrink small enough, it'll be actually very, very accurate for analysis. So. Um, uh, yeah, just for com complicated the part of it, I'm gonna actually give you another answer. Um, the under another example, uh, like out from here. Uh, so we're gonna say um, we're gonna just assume we know this is not correct equals to a x second plus b x force. Um, you know, there's a x second here in the correct analytical answer but you should do the third you should not do the fourth but yeah we we did it anyway uh, and then just as if we don't know anything we just say hey we're gonna just do the delta one x square plus delta two x force okay great so mm, you still do the same you got your external work equals to p delta one uh, x second plus p delta 2x force oh actually not ask uh, what I'm doing l l l because it's at l um, then your uh, internal work um, is e i 0 to l and then take second derivative which is 2a plus uh, um, 12bx squared and uh, then uh, 2 delta 1 plus 12 delta 2x squared dx uh, yeah simple enough um, I'm gonna like keep skipping here but then finally like those two guys if you really work just we did before you're gonna have something like a pl square ei on the that side 4AL plus 8BL third and then you have another equation PL force EI equals to 8AL third plus 24 over 5BL fifths those two if you solve it you got A equals to 0.0714PL over EI and then for B, you're gonna have uh, um, something like P over 11.2. Yeah, don't ask me how I get this, but anyway, I got it like that. Um, so it won't give you the exact answer. The answer it will give you will be Vx um, equals to a point zero seven one four PL e i x square plus uh, point point o eight nine three p e i l x force um so if you say okay well I know this guy, uh, that's not our classic answer. Um, yeah, with those A and B, um, but how far off? I'll give you an example, like at uh, X equals to L, uh, if you just plug it in, uh, the mm, if you use this VX, uh, will be equals to point one six zero seven p l third over e i. Uh, but uh, if you really do the true thing, you will get a 
like 3 over 1 P L 3 over E I yeah it's uh, actually quite different so what it tells you what it tells you is uh, right here um, it's actually important, to, I mean, if you can, to get your displacement function as close to reality as possible. Um, but a, a more important implication is that um, principle of virtual work, no matter how wrong you are, um, well, at least you have to satisfy boundary condition, no matter how wrong you are, you didn't do any mistake in deriving, it'll give you an answer that's uh, gonna kind of work. Um, as you shrink this down, and then, you know, in the end, uh, it'll, it'll be something that you can work with. So, uh, that... Um, We'll conclude our this uh, long series of example on using principle of virtual work to solve a simple cantilever beam. Um, then um, I think next lecture we're gonna do some other examples. Um, you know, uh, this yeah, frankly, cantilever beam. Come on, it's a uh, it's it's too easy, right? Uh, we'll use this method to, to show you how to solve some a little bit more complicated problems. Um, the idea is not really have you from now on just do this integration derivation like all day, but really to kind of uh, plant in your mind that uh, um, principle of virtual work is really a very powerful mathematical tool that you can do with to 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 establish equilibrium in deformable bodies and solve for displacements we do that by working through the uh, displacement function and then calculate our external virtual work then based on the theory of infinitesimal string figure out how we calculate the internal work that makes them equal and strip out the equations to solve for unknown coefficients in the displacement functions we are assuming. Once we get those coefficients, we know the displacement at every single point inside our body. Uh, and uh, if we know that, then through the theory of infinitesimal string, we know every string in every point inside that body. And then if we combine that with generalized Hooke's law, we know every single stress at every single point inside that body. So this is not mechanics of material. Uh, this is solid mechanics, and it's really some very powerful and very advanced stuff. Okay, well, see you next time.